I was looking at, you know, some of the world development indicators and, you know, for many countries, there isn't data going back, you know, until 10, 15 years ago, we're not getting kind of consistent data and knowing what is the, the ratio of, of out of school girls versus boys. Do you have any thoughts in terms of, you know, some of the challenges and, and some of the opportunities in strengthening gender data in particular? Whenever we're working within education systems to, to build data systems, we always from the outset um, assume that disaggregation is going to be included in it. But I think that, you know, we can't go into those conversations um, assuming that that is the, the kind of starting position of everybody in the room. And again, I think, you know, Jordan is a great example of that. We're working with universities to improve the data that they collect through the kind of recruitment and, and registration process for, for new teachers. And it just wasn't on their radar that we might want to collect that data. And it also raises difficult questions around, um, you know, kind of cultural context and, and cultural um, viewpoints on some of the things that we might take as a given in, in the US or, or in Europe. So again, you know, it comes down to these soft issues um, that we need to be having conversations with, with stakeholders from, from the very outset. I think the, the other challenge that we have come across um, is not just about education leaders buy into the value of collecting that data. It's also the comfort of individuals providing that information. And I think in spaces where there's low trust in government, um, people who are maybe identify identify as part of vulnerable groups, don't feel comfortable providing that data. So that's something we need to kind of take into account as well, thinking about data security and, and how we can ensure people that in providing us with that data, they're not somehow going to be put at any kind of risk and um, personally as well. <laughs>